And I'm trying to think uh, whether I'm still in Pensy or if I had made it to Ohio at the time. Which, oh crap, here we go again. See, I don't notice that much difference in traffic at this point, but I'm on, uh, I'm, yeah, I'm on the interstate. But anyway, I, uh, oh my God, there we go again. Now that, that, I, you know, that, that, if that was real life, that would have been, that would have been a disaster. But that's just, that's just a tiny scrape in the game. So I guess I really shouldn't complain all that much. But regardless, I'm out on Interstate 70 and, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's the late, I want to say it's probably like two or three o'clock in the afternoon. So it's not really. Not a lot of traffic out there, just on the open road, cruising in my, what was I driving at the time? Like, was that my Ford Pro? Probably would have been my Ford Pro. I was driving that, my 93 Pro. I love that car. Oh, I can bypass the way station. Thank you, thank you very much. Um, so heading out there. So I'm out there on the open road, just only a few cars around me. All of a sudden, I can see from the, uh, from, uh, so I'm heading west on 70. I can see on the eastbound side. Um, and there's, there's a, there's a big median here. I mean, there's, the, the median itself is about the equivalent of two to three highway lanes. So we got two to three highway lanes of median between east and westbound sides of the road. And so I look over there on the eastbound side, um, and and uh, all of a sudden I, I see this big rig coming down. He, he's just got a he's just got a regular uh, box trailer on. He just all on a regular box trailer. But I catch something out of the corner of my eye. I see this. All of a sudden I see him start to come across the median, and he's coming right at me, man. I'm like looking. It's like what the hell is going on here? So this truck is coming across the median and he's he's barreling right towards me across the median. I'm like, holy crap, what, what's about to happen? Oh, MS Tomcat with the raid. Tomcat coming in with the raid. Thank you very much for the raid there, Tomcat. Much appreciated. All right, here we go. Yeah, I'll just, I'll just stay behind here. Nothing to worry about here, officer. Nothing to worry about. But anyway, so here comes this uh, big rig coming right at me. I'm like, holy crap, what's about that? Now, I wasn't worried that he was going to hit me because I had plenty of road to, I had plenty of options to, to, to avoid whatever was about to happen. And there was still some distance between me and him. I'm like, oh, okay, what's, what's happening here? So all of a sudden, he comes across the median and he jackknifes right across uh was i think it was three lanes i think uh 70 the part that was at the interstate was three lanes or no maybe it was two well regardless whether it was two or three lanes he jackknifed completely across the highway so there was nowhere to go couldn't get around him on on like the um on the sides there so it, it was it was done eastbound or westbound 70 was done Nobody was going anywhere westbound from that point. Uh, and literally, he jackknifed probably about 100, 200 feet in front of me. And there were only a couple of cars in front of me. So there, there were three or four of us right there who, who saw this guy coming. And, and we were, you know, I got out of the car. We were all talking during this, you know, after, after the initial incident. And why we were sitting there waiting for the road to be cleared for about seven hours. All talking, and we were, you know, all telling us like, "Holy crap, this guy coming right at us," and stuff like that. So we're all just sitting there with this truck in front of us, and it's like, "Okay, we ain't going anywhere anytime soon." So, like I said, it was a good six or seven hours uh, to get the mess cleared up. Now, the the trailer didn't break open, which was a good thing because it probably would have even taken longer to clear out the highway. So we don't know what he was hauling. It's just that. He just jackknifed, blocked the highway, and that was it. We had to wait for, you know, the police and, of course, the 
the, the, the big ginormous uh, big rig tow truck to come in and, and right everything and get them off the road. But in the course of this, apparently one of the one of the people who who was stuck up front, you know, uh, was was uh, was a relative of a state trooper or or some, somehow knew a you know knew a state trooper or something to that effect. And uh, he had uh, you know he he had gone to to, to talk with the, with the police who were on scene at the time. And you know, chit chat or whatever it was. So uh, at some point, he'd come back, and you know, again, you know, we're we're all standing around outside of our cars because we had you know literally nothing else we could do. And so he comes back, and and ends up it ends up he found out exactly what happened. And so the situation was apparently there were two. Uh, there, there, there was a couple of people in a in a small car. I don't remember what the car. It was like one of the small compact cars. Uh, traveling eastbound, and uh, on that side of the on that side of the interstate, um, where we were at, you know, on the interstate, there was there was the rest area. So apparently, what happened? Uh, the people who were in this little compact car, compact sedan, whatever the heck it was. They were in the middle lane of, of, of the eastbound. As I was going west, they were, they were coming east. Eastbound side of the, uh, of the interstate. And they couldn't decide whether they wanted to stop at the rest stop or keep going. So instead of doing the intelligent thing and at the very least pulling off to the side of the road or even just pulling into the rest stop and deciding, well, we don't really want to stop and then just, you know, pulling out. No, they did the real intelligent thing of stopping right there in the middle of the damn highway. Until they could decide, well, do we want to pull into the rest stop or not? Now, of course, this poor driver, you know, he, he's just coming down the road. No, he he actually wasn't speeding or anything. He was he was he he did nothing wrong. It turned out. Uh, this poor guy driving this truck sees this car stopped in the middle of the highway, and of course, you know, at the time, you know, I don't think we were yet at uh, seventy. I think the speed limit was still fifty-five. May, maybe we were at sixty-five at that point. But anyway, uh, at that point, it doesn't really matter whether it was 55, 65, whatever. This guy sees this car all of a sudden come to a complete dead stop in the middle of the highway. And he, he, there was nothing, literally nothing he could do. <laughs> uh, so it was, he had the choice of either barrel into this little compact car and utterly destroy it and everyone inside of it. Or he could do what eventually uh, turned out he did, and that was jerk the wheel towards the center of the road, because obviously there was traffic coming up on the other side of him. And, um, yeah, and so that happened. And it was all because of, of, of some knuckleheads who <laughs> stopped dead in the middle of the highway because they couldn't figure out whether they wanted to actually stop at the rest stop or not. And so that, oh boy, Ooh, that was my bad. That was totally my fault. Oops. Well, just call that a little oopsie. Oh, wow. He actually put his flash, he put his flashers on. Now, is he going to move? That's the question. Is he going to move now, or are we going to wait for the cops? He ain't moving. Okay. All right, let me help you out here, pal. There we go. See you later. You have a wonderful day, sir. <laughs> Revenge for the truckers. Yeah, exactly. It's like... It's like that poor guy probably lost his job because um, 
No, I don't know that many truckers, but I, I've heard, you know, from people who, who, who've driven trucks and say like that, it's like, if, if you make, if, if you jackknife your truck, you're basically out of a job. It, it's essentially what it amounts to. It's, it doesn't matter what happens because you just, you just destroyed the trailer. You just destroyed wherever you're all and you just essentially destroyed your truck. And if it's a company truck, you know, if it's your own truck, that's bad enough because you're paying for all that out of your own pocket. Uh, well, you know, obviously you would have insurance, so the, you're, you're, you're destroying your insurance premiums, essentially is what happens if it's if it's your own truck. But if it's a company truck, you've just destroyed the company's truck as well. Yeah, see, he moved. Yeah, he moved. I gave him a little helping hand to move there, that's all. But yeah, that, that I just felt sorry for that guy because he probably lost his job. Uh because of what happened and it was entirely not his fault there was literally nothing he could do without killing somebody you know which you know obviously would have been a whole heck of a lot worse so he he did the he made the only decision he could at the time to uh to to minimize the catastrophe that could have ensued and so it's like it's like <sighs> Just, just the sheer idiocy of people just never ceases to amaze me. And it's funny. It's like after I started playing these games, I've, I've started playing these games, I guess it was November of 2017. So like I've been playing uh, these games for two and a half years now. And I got to tell you, it's I have so much more. And it's just, a, you know, it, it, it's a game. It's it's a simulator, but, you know, there's still a lot, you know, obviously a lot of... Uh, a lot of leeway to where it's more game and simulator. But still, I I have a lot more respect for uh, for truck drivers now. Not that I ever didn't have respect for them to begin with, because it's 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 a often thankless job, anyway. And I, I kind of try to respect respect everyone out there on the highway and and just day-to-day -day basis even before i started playing these games day-to-day -day basis just watching how people friggin drive when there there there's a truck around it's like oh my god come on really you gotta cut these guys a break sometimes but i i have a whole new level of respect for what these guys and gals have to put up with out there on the road and they're on the road for, you know, 10, 12 hours a day. You know, that literally, they, they live out there on the road. It's like, oh, God, where's a cab over when I need one? But yeah, it's like I, I have a whole new level of respect for what truck drivers have to go through. Oh, frick. I am t I am nowhere near where I need to be on this. I should have done was probably turn around here. Yeah, I, sh I should be able to get in here with no problem here. Let's just, there we go. I just got to be able to cut this the right way. Makes insurance life more easy and more reckless drivers to be punished, not drivers here. Yeah, exactly. Oh crap, I'm reading that and I'm going the wrong way. <laughs> that will put the trailer that way. That's the way we want the trailer to go. Yeah, right. It's, yeah, it's. It's absolutely ridiculous sometimes. And you know what? And the insurance companies are just. Because there was one time when I was, uh, this, this was back in the 90s. I was 20 odd years old. Yeah, see, this is, I'm, I'm going to have to straighten this out. Let me go this way. This might be easier this way. Um, and I lived in an apartment complex. And at the time, I worked at a bowling center. And the bowling center was literally around the corner. I could literally walk to work uh, from the apartment complex. That's how close it was. 
which was kind of convenient, but um, especially since they had the bar attached. So <laughs> it was it turned out to be quite convenient on more than one occasion. Um, but there's one time during, I don't even know, I don't think this is even during the winter. I think this is one of those freak March or April uh, winter, winter event storms that we had here. And uh, I was pulling out of my apartment complex, and there was there was black ice on the on the road. But uh, it was screw this; <laughs> it'll take me all day. Um, but the way it came out, the apartment complex road was coming out this way. The one of the the main side roads was going this way. So there was a T junction stop sign on my side. So. I was coming out of the apartment complex and I wasn't going fast because it was the apartment complex road, you know, at the most it could be doing 10, 15 miles an hour, but it was just enough, uh, just enough to where I, I hit this pack of, uh, patch of black ice right at the stop sign. And it's like, oh yeah, I'm not going anywhere. All of a sudden, naturally now, uh, now this is, a, like I said, the side road, not really a busy side road, but of course, as my luck would have it, that at that very moment, the only other car within a five mile radius of where I was at, it was happening be going down that side road. At that very moment, I hit the black ice. And so I T-boned them. And again, it wasn't really that, it wasn't really that hard of a hit. I mean, th there was damage, but not like, you know, really bad damage. So we both had, um, you know, some pretty good dents. I had to, you know, my front end was dented, his side panels were dented. So, you know, he hit him, you know, it happens to said, you know, obviously the guy understood once he got out and saw all that, you know, hey, road conditions weren't that great. Um, and so, you know, we did what, you know, we we went through the whole process and stuff like that. But it was funny. It's like uh, at the time I was still on my parents' car insurance because uh, I think technically I was still how it what the, the laws were that I was still able to be under their insurance uh, at whatever age I was. And so when my dad called the insurance company to to report and do all this kind of stuff, the, 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 he told me that the agent he was talking to on the phone was such an ass. Because it's like when my father was explaining what happened, he, the agent uh, automatically just assumed, oh, okay, I see what he was. He was probably just speeding right up there. didn't bother to stop at the stop sign. This, this. So he was, the agent was trying to make it like I was just being a complete bonehead on the road and just went t-boned this guy because i was just being an idiot on the road my father's like no that's not what happened that's not what the police report says and my father really got pissed at this insurance agent because he was making it out to be like oh i'm just this typical 20 year old who don't know how to drive and i just you know i was being an idiot on the road and wrecked this guy it's like my father's like no that's not what happened and so after that, he he immediately called, canceled the canceled the insurance, and and got with another insurance company because he's like, there's no need to put up with that kind of nonsense. But yeah, yeah, the fun things we have to uh, we have to deal with here is just yeah. All right, let's see where we're at here because we still have one more achievement to get here before Washington opens up. All right, so we're in Medford. We need to get way over here. Uh, how long is this going to take me if I just drive it? All right, that's about five minutes. All right, we can do it. So I was debating on whether I should just teleport over there and do it, but you know what? We'll uh, we'll drive it today. I I do have some road here. I do want to uh, a little bit of road here we can knock out exploration wise, so that'll make it worth it. It's guys like that that ruin you when you don't put your foot down. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, it's like, it's like, yeah, it's, you know, he's got his job to do, but, you know, it's like, come on, don't be a, uh, don't be an ass at the end of the day. Don't, don't make er erroneous assumptions uh, when you don't really know the whole story here. What time? Oh, is it nine o'clock at night already? Really? Wow. All right, there we go. Because I'd still be trying to park this damn trailer. 
just get the lights on here. So let's uh, let's roll out here. Autobots roll out. Oh wait, no. Hold on. Hold on here. Uh, okay. For a minute there, from the map, it looked like I could actually get out that way, but I can't. So we'll uh, go this way. But yeah, my father wasn't happy. Uh, <laughs> wasn't too happy with that guy. <laughs> Alright, we're going. We're going. It's funny with traffic. I haven't really noticed that much difference in traffic at this point. Okay, I see what that is. That's just a uh, this, uh, garage there. Alright. But yeah, the, the fun adventures on the American highway. What can you say? It's uh, sometimes never a dull moment. <laughs> Although I, I, I must say, uh, I have to admit, I, I, you know, the thing is with me, it's like, uh, you know, I'll admit when I do something completely stupid. And uh, I'm probably more critical of myself when I know I did something stupid. <laughs> and I hate city driving. Let me just put it out there that I, I, I cannot live in a city. I cannot stand city driving. I need, I need country. I'm a country boy, man. I need them country roads. Nice open spaces. When I sit out on my porch, I just want to see mother nature man i want to see god's creations i don't want to see buildings i don't want to see people but uh when i was looking for uh when i was looking uh i i had gone to uh an online tech school some of you may have heard of it computertraining.com this was a big thing about 10 15 years ago and of course being sort of technically inclined at the time and still sort of technically inclined at the time that i am I figured, you know what, and, and I was working retail at the time. I'm like, and done. I just can't do it anymore. Let me let me look into this computertraining.com thing. Uh, so uh, I went there and did that. And uh, as part of that, as, as part of the, as part of um, doing the course, they, they helped you with job job placement and job interviewing, that kind of stuff. Um and so they, uh, like, towards the end of the actual course, uh, the, the course curriculum itself, you know, we, we, we would go do the studying. It was like a six-month program. So at the end of the six months, we, we of course, take our certs. Uh, but around that time, they, they would also bring in, uh, uh, they would have sort of like a job fair at the, uh, at the, uh, place where where you know the, the classroom uh was at uh so they have a job fair they bring in they bring in all these different you know representatives from all this yeah see this is where the traffic we're <laughs> we got ourselves an impasse here we have ourselves an impasse <laughs> yep, that happened. There we go. Okay, that was fun. And go ahead and go now. <laughs> I like the bank feet. I was doing a bug buy for my model building hobby. I wanted to pay it cash, so I went to the bank, asked for the amount, and asked. The why I needed it. I answered them. Ask me that again. Yeah, yeah, right. They they have it's your money. Why why are they Yeah, they have no right to ask what you want to use your own money for. That's amazing. Only able to get that amount after two days. I got mine the same day. Nice. Four thousand nice. Yeah, see, a little bit of, uh, you know what? Just do your job. Give me my money. <laughs> but 
but yeah, as uh, where um. Yeah, so uh, as part of the so uh, as part of the job fair, I I, I got uh, you no, know, it was sort of like an initial interview process. I was talking to this one uh, one tech company that uh, did a lot with um, that uh, did tech services for a I, I think a hospital in Center City, Philadelphia. And so I went through the initial process with the, you know, interview process with the rep there. So he sort of extended, extended an offer and wanted me to come down to the hospital for, for another interview with, uh, with the, uh, with the owner, it was sort of like a small business. So that, so it had sort of like an owner, like the uh, linker, please. Uh, so, you know, he wanted me to come down to the hospital to, you know, talk with him, sort of do like an interview with him and stuff like that. And this was before I had GPS uh, in the car. So everything was, okay, map quest, print out the map and take it with you. And so my adventures in Central City, Philadelphia were quite interesting that day. Yeah, a little bit of persuasion, exactly. Yeah, it's it's funny how uh, how uh, banks and businesses like that will perk up saying, "Yeah, I'd like to close my account if you just if you keep hassling me like that." Like, oh no, 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 it's 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 okay, it's fine, it's fine. What what did you need again, sir? But yeah, it was uh, yeah, I was uh, yeah, like I said, I don't like city driving. City city roads just confuse the hell out of me. Uh, thank God for GPS sat nav <laughs> because even with with the map quest map and stuff like that i was just like oh my god i was it was bad <laughs> it was so bad at one point uh because a lot a lot of the city roads even big 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 wide roads you know multi-lane roads that are in the city there, there are major uh, city uh, city throughways there. Are one way. So, even though your destination is sort of right on the corner of that road there, you actually have to go two or three blocks down before you can actually turn. And then, uh, and then. You know, sort of essentially make make a U-turn. You have to go down, turn, turn, and come back up, because you know it's all one-way roads. So I'm just trying to follow the map, man. I'm I'm just trying to follow the map, and of course, you know, sometimes these maps aren't always accurate or or you know refined enough to uh, point out. It's like no, you can't actually go down that way. You have to go down this way. So I end up not only going down the wrong way on one of these major one-way streets in the center of Philadelphia. I'm like, holy crap, I'm going, you know, it, when I realized it, I was like, holy crap, I'm going down the wrong way. Now, fortunately, at the time I made the turn, it, you know, the, the traffic lights or whatever, there was no traffic on that particular point of the road uh, from one corner of the block to the next. But then I realized, because I'm looking further down, like the next block down, I'm like, uh, why are those cars facing the wrong way? And I realized, oh, wait a minute, I'm, I'm, I'm the one who's facing the wrong way. So I'm like, what the frick do I, do I, do I do now? Because I'm going down the wrong way. There is literally no other, I can not turn down another street anywhere before I, I make a real mess of things on this road. So I'm like, holy shit. It's like, what the hell am I going to do? So I did the only thing I, I, I really thought I could do at the time. And that was, okay, we're going up on the sidewalk. And we're just going to turn the frick around. Because that's the only thing I could do. So, yeah. I, I yeah. Right, and and it, was, it wasn't just like a, it was it's sort of a larger size sidewalk. You know, it's, you know, you could probably fit four or five people abreast on the length of the sidewalk so i'm up there i'm driving on the sidewalk at this point i'm like holy fuck it's like where where where's this cop because i know there's a cop here and he's gonna friggin nail my ass to the wall 
I'm going down the sidewalk. It's still going down the wrong way. Just so I have enough room just to spin around and, and get the hell out of Dodge. Which is what I did. I'm like, holy shit. But yeah, that was one of my not so brilliant moments of driving in in, in Philadelphia. It's like, oh, oh. It's like, never again. Never again am I <laughs> going into the city like this. Yeah, I have no idea. I, I like I said, it's like I just I get confused easy, even even in, you know it's I'm 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 pushing senior citizen now, so it's not that hard to confuse me anymore. But even back then, in in my youth, I, there were times where I yeah, you know, certain things just, just city driving just confuses me. I just cannot get a grasp on city driving. There are certain things I just can't wrap my brain around, and city driving is one of them. And that was the perfect example of, yeah. <laughs> I did that, and yeah, I, I am not going to attempt to do that again. But somehow I did manage to get to the hospital. I did manage to get to the hospital. Without killing myself or anyone else, and I, I don't think I broke any further traffic laws at that point. And uh, I went through the interview, got extended the job offer, and never, never heard from them again. Which actually turned out to be a good thing, because I don't know how the hell I was going to be able to get to the hospital every single day of my life to, to do that. So I think it turned out to be a blessing in disguise at that point. But yeah, I, I have to admit, I, w I, was, I was the complete bonehead on that, uh, on, on, on that instance. Once got your car stuck when going on a 180 degree corner downwards, but the corner took the corner too quickly and it slipped on both sides. Oh my God, really? Wow. <laughs> See, that's one of those things where you, where you know you did the bonehead thing, but you can't escape it. It's like I was able to escape because it, my, my, I. God granted me with the perfect timing. Of, like I said, there was nobody on the sidewalk at the time. There was no traffic um, coming down that particular block of the road at the time. I said, I, 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 I have to do this. And so, uh, yeah, I was, I, was, uh, I was able to escape. You know, obviously, people saw what I was doing because, you know, I could see them. So, obviously, they could see me. But I managed to escape that unscathed. But yeah, you were no damage. Lots of laughs from the <laughs> from the Irish people. <laughs> yeah, I could imagine. Yeah, the Irish have a have a good sense of humor. That's for sure. Where is? I still have to pick this job up. Where is? Did I completely miss? Oh, no, there it is. Okay. It's it's right up ahead here. Yeah, but that was... Uh... And I have to say, I... Uh... That was probably the most stupid thing I ever did in a vehicle, and probably the only time I did anything that stupid. At least not... Not, not that... Well, I... I... I have done some stupid things, like uh, trying to drive when I was completely completely drunk off my ass and uh several times because like i said it worked at a bowling center that had a bar and grill attached so you know i was general manager at the time friendly with the owners it was a proprietorship and we all we all uh ended up uh, always having good times after work let's put it that way uh especially in the night leagues when we would bowl and everything else so yeah uh, let's see where I want to go here. Coos Bay. Let's go to Coos Bay. Yeah, Coos Bay is a nice shorter trip, so we'll take that one. I, I've done stupid things like that, and fortunately, I mean that I have to admit was, that that was probably those those were probably the stupidest times of my life. Uh, again, back in my youth, before I I really knew any better. Where do I have to go? I have to go here. Where am I? I'm over there. Oh, frick. This is going to be interesting because I have to reverse all the way down. 
See, I, I have to say that Philadelphia trip actually wasn't the stupidest thing I did. But I've been, uh, I've been pretty fortunate that uh, as stupid as uh, I was in my younger days behind the wheel of a car, I, uh, I, uh, must have had a really nice guardian angel looking out for me during those times. Oh my god, come on. Alrighty then. Alright, you know what? For the interests of time, because time is running... Oh, hello, I'm still moving. Time is running short. We're gonna cheat our way to this one. Here we go. Thank you. <laughs> Because literally I could spend the next next 30 minutes that I have for my stream here this morning just trying to get into this particular spot. And I'm not going to do that because I want to get on the road here. I want to drive. Boom. But yeah, that's uh Yeah, but yeah, the Irish, they are uh they are some pretty uh pretty funny people to be around, I must say. I think I, uh, let's get some lights on here too, shall we? I think I may have told this story when I, uh, when I took a trip up to, uh, with a couple of friends uh, to the South Street Seaport in New York, uh, which, uh, uh, what was the, there, there was a pub there. I, th I can't remember the name of the pub, but it was, it was, um, it was a genuine Irish slash uh, English pub. I think it was an English pub. It was a, more or less an English pub. But it had a lot of, uh, a lot of, uh, you know, uh, or at least the one point we were there, we had, uh, it was during the World Cup. And a bunch of uh, Irishmen uh, who were over for the World Cup at that time. I think it was. I think it was in the United States at the time. I think the World Cup was when the World Cup was in the U.S. If I'm not mistaken, because I think that's why they were there. Um, but it was a bunch of Irish guys. It's me, me and my two buddies from the bowling center, and then it was I think three or four of these Irish guys. And their wives were out doing, you know, they they just, they just came to the pub. This, this, you know, authentic English pub. Because I think it was actually run by uh, by uh, by an Englishman, uh, somebody from uh, who, who came over from Great Britain. And man, the good times we had in that pub. I, I don't think the pub's there anymore. Because this this was back in the '90s, so this was 20 odd years ago. God, that was a great pub. I loved going up there. Uh, but uh, like I said, you know, it was so it was the three of us and then these three or four Irish guys and we'd get there in the morning. We would get there. We'd take the train up, get there in the morning. So it, we'd be there as soon as it opened at like eight or nine in the morning. So we'd eat breakfast, drink, obviously, eat lunch, drink, we'd still be drinking. And that was our usual ritual when we we'd, get, we'd go up there a couple of times, uh, a couple of times a year. Like I said, this one particular time we had uh, we had these Irish guys who who were there when we were there. Oh my god! Oh my god! That was probably the one of the best days we ever had. Just sitting there drinking, eating with these Irish guys, <laughs> just having a friggin' grand old day. Because the thing is with. I, <sighs> I don't know. Maybe, maybe Cat, you and Taz can chime in on this. But, but to me, as an American, I find there are, you know, a lot of Europeans, at least from particular countries, like Ireland, like Scotland. Um, now I've been to Switzerland. I, I I've been to France. Uh, I want to, you know, I've been to Belgium. And I want to say particularly, sort of maybe not so much. France, uh, but maybe because we were Americans, <laughs> but uh, I have to say, like the Irish, the Scots. Uh, I know when we were in Belgium and Switzerland, 
we were we were treated very very well by the natives there friendly friendly people awesome people to be around just hang out with but with these irish guys it's like never met them before we were only there a couple hours and it was like we were we were lifelong friends from the same small irish town they were from we were their best damn friends that whole day in the bar and it was just to me it's like it always seems that, that europeans are a hell of a lot more friendly and uh and and kind uh than uh than us americans can be uh at times <sighs> but that was a hell of a day and it was funny because uh, we we got to talking at one point about you know them them traveling and, and that kind of stuff and what they do yeah i heard that with scottish and irish guys too yeah it's like it's like you, you're their long lost brother or something you know it's it it was just amazing just hanging out with these guys but it was funny it's like the things they were saying it was just we were just dying laughing because they're at the one at the one point it's like at that point in time that was even before i had i had uh this was before i did my cross-country trip so i literally um had not gone anywhere except when i went to college i went out of state now that, that that was pretty much it uh, that was really the only travel i had done was just going to college down in maryland so it's funny because these guys were talking about how they would go from one town to, you know one town to the next you know you know when they would go on holiday they'd go all over the countryside and that kind of stuff i told us like wow i i've never been i've never been like 30 miles anywhere from my home and they all just looked at me and, said, and they just started laughing they said it's in 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 their irish brogue they say boy if you said that back at home you'd be shot because <laughs> they just found it incredible that i had not traveled anywhere in the united states because to them it it, it was funny because i think I, I if i remember right the world cup was over on the west coast and the thing that they found absolutely amazing was that the United States was the United States was so big is that we're sitting in this bar. It's nighttime already. It's dark outside. We're we're watching the TV and it's still daylight uh, out on the West Coast. And they, they just found that it's like, holy crap, it's like this country is damn big. You know, it's dark here, but it's still sunlight out there. And that was just that was just the, the funniest funniest things that some of the stuff that we'd be saying about you know just talking about our life experiences and things it was just so funny french people depends on whether you yeah see that see that's the thing with the french that's the thing that we learned because i went over to france the, the the trips i did over to europe france switzerland belgium um we did that part uh, as uh, high school high school trips. I went over there twice as part of high school sponsored trips. Um, as part because I took you know I took French French classes in high school. Uh, was, of course, being part French Canadian, I thought, hey, it'd be pretty cool to speak my ancestors' native language. Because you know, being French Canadian, obviously, we at one point came from France. For uh, you know, at at some point in our history, we came from France and moved to Canada. I figured that would be cool to speak, uh, speak, you know, be able to learn to speak French and all that. So it's part of these two, two sponsored trips there. Um, that was the one thing that we sort of learned that the French, you know, the French have a certain reputation and it's, it's, if, if you make the attempt, at least if you make the attempt to try to speak French and try to communicate with them in their native language, you you won't have a problem with a Frenchman. <laughs> but if you go over there with your typical American attitude, you boy, you are in for some sorry times. So yeah, that was the one thing that was sort of impressed upon us that that as long as we were wherever we were doing, as long as we were attempting, attempting to communicate with them uh, in French, then hey, you know they helped us out they 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 were friendly and uh everybody we met was pretty cool with us at that point yeah i know i i am uh oh god i have 42 minutes before i have to sleep and i've got three hours before 
I finished this job. Yeah, you're right. I do have to, uh, I gotta check the map here. Oh, crap. I'm screwed. Because there was my rest stop. Oh, I am so screwed. Because that... Yeah, I should have been paying more attention to. I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to have to go down there. I'm going to have to go down here. I'm going to have to go down there. There's this. See that other one. Yeah, because this can, uh, this can actually get uh, really interesting because my driver will actually fall, start falling asleep at the wheel here. And uh, the screen will go black, and I will have no control over this vehicle. And on a uh, on a uh, wooded mountain road like this, that's not going to be very pretty. It's not going to be very pretty. French, see now. Now here I am going to try to rechat, and that's not going to be very pretty either. French speaking in general, when you speak French, they'll help you. You struggle, they'll see they help you when you don't speak. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, see, because that's where, you know, that, that, and that was really our experience. It's like, you know, obviously we were still in high school. Now, obviously our French teacher spoke French, Ger she spoke like three or four languages quite fluently. French, German, uh, what else did she speak? I think it was like Dutch, so, something up there. Some, some of the, probably some. I think she spoke. You know, I know she spoke French and German. Those were the two main languages. Uh, she English, English, obviously, because she was actually not. Um, she was. Where was she from? I. Because she was from Europe. I don't remember where in Europe she was from. Our French teacher. Uh, but yeah, she spoke French and German fluently and she pretty much, she spoke English without an accent, virtually, uh, from what I remember. And then she spoke two other languages. Um, I don't remember what they were. Uh, but yeah, so she had no problem going over there, but you know, it, it was us, uh, us high schoolers. We were struggling, but you know, we we had a great time. And like like I said, it's like as long as we made the attempt, the people there were were more than willing to help us out there. What you doing, Boost? Right. Hold on. What was that? Well, yeah, she, yeah, she had to speak English. Yes. No, no, I don't know. I don't remember. I don't remember whether she spoke Italian or not. Uh, what are you guys doing? When are you leaving? Because Mama and Pop Pop are going to need the, uh, the car seat. I got towels on the table. That's why I put the two towels on the table for the pool, you fools. All right, well, get a shower because I'm going to be almost done anyway. So I just wanted to make sure you guys... You know, have everything you need before you go. I'm going to be finished soon. Ah, the children. The in-laws are in for the week because uh, Aaron's graduating eighth grade on Wednesday. So, so excited and scary at the same time. It's like, where, where did the time go? Hey, Luxembourg. Could be. Who knows? <laughs> Here we go. Where am I going here? Native Flemish. Similar. See, that's. I, I want to say it was something. So I don't. I don't remember where she was from. Because I do remember she. I, I remember the one story she told is like the first time she had come to him. She didn't know snow. Wherever she was from, she it, it almost never ever snowed. Um. So when she first came to America, and the first time it snowed, uh, she used to tell this story. The first time she came to America, and the first time it snowed, she had this vision of, of the, the classic 50s 
uh, and 60s Hollywood movies to where obviously it was fake snow. So the women would be, you know, they'd be out, they wouldn't have a hat on or anything like that, a light jacket, you know, and they, they'd come in from outside the snow and they'd still look beautiful and make, you know, the hair would still be perfect. And she said the first time she, that, that she encountered snow, it was a complete disaster because she didn't know what snow was. And she only had this vision from the movies of what, of what it would be like to be out in snow. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Probably more more south somewhere. Um, but yeah, I I don't remember. I I do remember because she because she had told the story to where she she was she was over in Europe, and she was talking to some people, and they they literally the entire conversation that she had with these other people were done in like three of the three of the five languages that she spoke. Because she said they'd start speaking French, and then they. Then, then they would just all of a sudden they they they'd go to German. They'd start talking, you know. They'd start talking about something in German, and then they'd switch to the third language, and then they'd go back to France, and then German again. So they literally had this, this two-hour conversation in three different languages, which was pretty funny. Yeah. See, even snows in Spain or Portugal. That's what I'm saying. I don't. I don't. I don't want to. I don't think she was Italian. I don't think it was Italian because because she spoke. So it had to be southern France or something like that, I'm, I'm thinking. So like I said, it was, it was France, French and German that she spoke the most. This guy's in my way. Where am I going to park here? You know, I, I'm here, I don't even realize. Dude, you are in my way. All right, you, you're, you're getting hit, dude. You are so getting hit. I just, I just ran right over him, didn't I? Yup, there we go. <laughs> Oh, he's got some bouncy shocks on that car. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, it's got to be. She, she may have been German. I'm trying to think what her name was. I can't remember what her name was. Wrecking Ball Weiler on the road. <laughs> yeah, you're damn right. Oh, look, there he is. Hey, pal. How's it going? How's it going? How you doing? This guy's just going in circles, isn't he? He's just going in circles. This guy is just going in circles. Yeah, all right. Yeah, so I, yeah, I, I, for life of me, I can't remember. <laughs> this guy is, you know what? Hold on. This guy too, this guy in the red car, he's going in circles. I want, I want to try something here. Where do you think you're going? Boom. Now what are you going to do? Now what are you going to do? What are you going to do? Oh God, I'm all cockeyed now. All right, good, that's fine. I can sleep there. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? You're still going to be there in the morning, aren't you? Oh, look at that. He's gone. <laughs> I confused the AI. You didn't know what to do after I hit him. <laughs> All right. Uh, now I, I actually have to finish this job, don't I? All right. We, we got to get moving here. We still got two and a half hours to go here. Rain off so I can turn my wipers off. There we go. Let's just go. Yeah, I'm trying to think. Is he like even all of France will get snow? She had to be. Of course, I'm in ATS now. I was about to say, well, let me check the map. But that's only going to help if I was in Euro Truck here. She had to be. from southern you, you know what spanish i think it was spanish i think she may have been she may have been from spain or portugal
I'm trying to think now that that now that you said Spain or Portugal, that, that I think that may that may have rung that little bell in my head. I I think she may have been from Spain. So Spanish would have been so Spanish would have been the other language, but I but because I re, that conversation I remember she said she was speaking. I I remember French, so it had to be uh, Spanish she was speaking to. So that would have been her native language, Spanish. I just remembered that conversation where it was mostly French and German because I think she was speaking to German natives, but they could speak, you know, three or four different languages too. I think that's what it was. Mrs. Miller, Madame Miller, that was her name. She married a, she married an American. That's what it was. I think she was from Spain. I think so it had to be it had to be southern Spain for her not to know a whole heck of a lot about snow. Yeah, see, I think that's what it was. She, you know, they may have got be one of them instances, sort of like the South, the South of the United States. They'll, you know, South Carolina will get snow, you know, maybe once every couple of years. But for the most part, you know, people don't know how to handle snow down there. So it's when they get it, it's like a complete disaster. So it could have been one of those situations where, you know, where she lived would get snow, but it'd be a very, very rare occurrence. Yeah, that's what it was. Yeah, I'm pretty sure she was from Spain. So, yeah, it was Spanish, French, German, English, and then one, one other language she was able to speak, which I want to say was sort of like maybe one of the Flemish languages. But yeah, that was, uh, those were some interesting times back then. Yeah, that, that, and where, where did I start that conversation? Oh yeah, the Irish guys in, in, in the pub. The North Star, that's what, the North Star Pub. That's what it was. It was called the North Star Pub on the South Street Seaport in New York. New York City. Oh God, that was a great place. Oh my God, good times there. I remember there was one time we went there, you know, me and my two buddies there. And again, it's like when we went there, we go there a few times a year. And when we go, we get there first thing in the morning and we would be there literally till the place closed at four o'clock in the morning. And most of the time when we did that, we'd head back to Penn Station because we take the train up. Uh, we take the train up. Uh, so we would go back to Penn Station and there was a bar in Penn Station that would never close. Whatever the laws were, whatever that was. That bar would never close, so we leave. We leave the South, the North Star Pub. Well, there was two or four. I don't remember. But every time the North Star Pub closed, we leave, go to the station, and then go to that bar and drink for another few hours. <laughs> so we were literally pretty much drinking and eating for twenty-four straight hours almost. By the time we eventually got home, oh my God. Those were the days. I remember the one time we went up there. And of course, we got to know the bartenders really good. And, uh, and the food they had. Oh my God, the food was awesome. Again, authentic English food. Oh God, it was awesome just eating there. And we would, ju we would just drink and eat constantly. It wasn't even like breakfast, lunch, and dinner. It would just be a constant... Knock back a few Guinnesses. Oh, oh, let's try this. Let's try this on the menu. So we'd order that and eat that. And then, you know, and you know, two hours later, oh, let's try this. So we were constantly eating and drinking there throughout the day. And this one time we went up there. Uh, like I said, it would open the clothes. We were there. So they were closing up. They were getting ready to leave. And we would run the tab, you know, they, they would just run the tab for us because they knew we would be there all day. So we wouldn't pay for anything until at the end of the day. So normally, of course, at the end, normally at the end of the day, we would be looking at, you know, three, four hundred dollars at, at the minimum, um, you know, as, as a total bill for us. So figure, you know, the cheapest would have been a hundred bucks for each of us. Most of the time. 
I think we're spending upwards of 200 a piece uh, with all the drinking and eating we did. But this one time we, we, we got the bill and it was like 50 bucks total. That was it, 50 bucks they charged us. And we we're like, this can't, this can't be right. There's no way this was right. But because we were we we were there so often and we would just we would just spend money like crazy. I guess I guess at, at one point the owner or, or somebody was there that that one day is that yeah you know, they're they're on the house for the most part today. So it's like we were there all day. It's like holy crap! It's like this this can't be right. But they said yeah. That's it. That, that, there you go. Fifty bucks. We're like, you shit. We're like, thank you. And we were just so happy. And we ended up leaving like a, a, a two or three hundred dollar tip. It was like, well, we, 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 we were here all day. It's like, we can't. No, we, we So we ended up leaving, uh, leaving like, like the, the bartenders, the servers, everybody like combined. You know, there's only like two or three of them. So it was like a hundred bucks a piece. We, we left, we left everybody. It's like, eh, here you go. It's like we, we brought all this money because we thought that's what we ended up spending. That's what we usually spend. It's all yours now. So every everybody left left the North Star Pub very happy that day. Yeah, I must say. But God, there was, there were some good times up in that pub, man. Good times. Uh, sometimes I miss those days. And sometimes... You know, or at least I should say, the next morning when the hangover hits, it's those times are rare. Yeah, I don't miss those days. But the good thing was, of course, what we, by by drinking what we were drinking and eating what we were eating, the hangover was very, very mild. Very mild. It's it 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 it's the it's the sugared up American beer that uh that kills you with the hangovers well yeah those were those those were good days back then and the point of that that the, that story was that you know hey irishmen are pretty cool people to hang out with right <laughs> oh man oh the stories i could tell of my youth but I shall take those to my grave where are we at here we gotta be pretty close where are we oh yeah I was about to say we gotta be pretty close by now so we're right there we are right there we will have this final Oregon achievement wrapped up here Perfect timing, because I am starving. Speaking of food and drink right now, I am starving. I need some breakfast. And I guess, I guess I should feed the children, too. I fed the cat this morning. Hershey got fed this morning before I came down. The children, well, they were still asleep. So I guess I got to go up and feed the children, too. Unless, of course, the in-laws have fed them, which, hey, works for me. But we'll see here. Come on. As we ride off into the sunset here. Where are we? Here we are. Here. Oh, we're gonna hit, we're gonna hit him. Ooh, a little bump. That was just a little tap. A little tap to let you know I'm still here. Yeah, that's right. The most important one got is got well, it's a her, her food, the cat. She got her food. There we go, Windows 10. Thank you. I was wondering when that was going to happen. The old Windows. I still, I still cannot figure out what that is. It only happens when I'm streaming on Windows 10. I've got nothing else going. I've got OBS open. I've got my Firefox chat window open. I got the chat popped out and in, into a little window here, and that's it. Well, I got Discord too, but. That's all I have open here, and I don't know what the heck that is. That that all of a sudden it pops the, the mouse out of the game here. 
Okay, I lose I lose mouse connection to the game, then I hear the chime. But fortunately, it, the frame the rates drop on the game when that happens. So I know it, it happens right away. And all I have to do is, cl is click the mouse and I'm back in the game again. But I have no idea what causes that. And it's only on Windows. It doesn't do it on Windows 7. Never did it on Windows 7. Only did it on Windows. I know it's Windows 10 trying to bug me. Because I remember when uh, last year, last April, uh, April of 2018, when Squirrel was doing his uh, multiplayer truck convoy in ATS. Um, at that time, I had to use the Windows 10 laptop we had because my, my normal Windows 7 streaming rig, that's when I had broke, broke the monitor on it, the screen on it. So I had to use the Windows 10 for the convoy and it did the same thing. All of a sudden, I lose connectivity, I lose mouse control in the game. I'm driving down the road, I lose mouse control. And I, at that point, I had no idea what the hell happened. I'm like, I can't drive my truck anymore. So I go off the road, run into a tree. I hear the chime. I'm like, freaking Windows 10, what just happened? Because there's no notification pop-up. There's nothing that happens. It's just all of a sudden the mouse is out of the game and I hear the chime. I'm like, why? <sighs> so that's the first time I experienced that happening. And again, it never happens on Windows 7. It's only on Windows 10. And it's happened pretty much every time I've I've streamed either ATS or ETS2. It'll happen once, and that's it. It'll just happen once. Most of the time it happens early on in the stream. This time it just happened to do it, what, over two hours into the stream, which is interesting so i have no idea what anybody out there use windows 10 know what that is and why because this this will be it, it and it's got to be something related to, oh my god how am i getting in here and it it's only does it during the truck sims so it's got to be something related to the game on windows 10 because like i'll train simulator Nothing. I did bus simulator last night. No problems. Any MMO I play or when I do my MMO streams, nothing. I do my classic player game stream. It's only when I'm playing ATS or ETS2 that it does it. See, you'll get the pop up. See, that's that's because to me, that's that's what it is. It's some sort of notification that should be popping up, but it, nothing pops up. That's the only thing I could think of. It, it's supposed to be some sort of Windows 10 notification because that, that's the notification chime. That's the notification chime that I get. Like that chime is like when I'm doing um, when I'm doing video editing, and and the and the video finishes compiling. Uh, you know when I'm when I'm compiling it to an MP4, and the video finishes compiling. Well, that's the chime I hear when it's done. And then of course I got the Windows the little pop up. Hey, it's done. Do you want to play your video and check it out? It's like, okay. So that that's that's the same chime that I hear when that happens. So it's some sort of Windows notification that something something occurred. But there is no indication of anything occurring. <laughs> so I have no idea what it is. Like I said, it only happens when I'm when I'm trucking. And generally, I See, I can't remember if it ever ha happens when I'm just driving, which it does. It actually doesn't, because I've been doing a lot of, uh, I've been doing a lot in ETS the last couple of weeks, as a matter of fact, uh, just mapping for the 60% map completion, and it's never done it while I've been doing that. And I've been playing for a couple hours at a time when I do that. So it's only when I'm streaming on top of that that does it. If you push buttons for a long time, I sometimes get this chime and the pop up that asks me if I want to add a connection to that long keystroke. I'm pushing and hold. You see, that's. But see, the funny thing is, is that it, that can't be it because because I'll be holding down the W key uh, for the accelerator. I'm constantly holding that down unless I put on the cruise control. 
But like, like I, like this whole, whole stream, I, I've not, I've actually not really used cruise control, except for like one or two, just the one or two uh, times where I, I think I mentioned all streams, like time to block in cruise there. That was it. So yeah, it, cause like sometimes, like sometimes like on Windows 7, I'll get the sticky key thing. Where I'm hitting the one button, you know, five times really quick. Say, like, oh, do you want to implement sticky keys? No, no, I do not. Thank you, Windows 7. But no, thank you. Um, so it's not that. I, I just can't figure out what it is. Lumberjack. We are now a lumberjack. Achievement completed. Do we level up? Oh, look at that. We just managed to level up, too. I think I'm done, aren't I? Oh, no. Okay. ETS2. ETS2. I finally leveled everything up. So we'll go, uh, see, I, I, see, my initial instinct here is just to throw it into fuel economy so I can keep them even, but you know what? Uh, you really don't need to worry about fuel economy. I'll max that out first, and is what I'll do. But there we go. We're good. We're in. We're done. Stream complete. Woot, woot. Thank you, everyone, for hanging out with me today much much appreciated but yeah i i still you know it's, it's so it's been like a you know obviously with my new streaming rig here on windows 10 i've only been using this for a couple of months and i only used the laptop you know like i said last year for a few weeks and that was it and i just i can't i can't figure out what it is because like i said it's only when i'm doing ats or ets2 that it will happen i just don't know what it is it, it's just something it's got to be something in the game is sending a signal at that point in time that causes windows 10 to react i don't know what it is can't figure it out but anyway thank you for joining me this morning everyone it has been a great pleasure hosting you thank you for the kittens raid much appreciated thank you jadel thank you wwa and everybody else who stopped by from the twitch kittens the love is much appreciated. Hopefully, I can return the favor for you guys sooner rather than later. Again, not enough time to try, but uh, I, I try to raid whenever I can. I hope, hopefully, this weekend, I can actually do a couple of raids. In fact, I, I probably should pop on now so I can raid while I'm eating breakfast. That 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 might be the thing to do. I'll have to get on to mobile um, and do some raiding. But thank you, Jables. Much appreciated. Thank you for the follow. Thank you for the bits as well. That's much appreciated. Thank you, WWA, for the follow as well. And everybody else who I, you know, obviously. Trying to drive and reach at the same time. Ted text and drive? No, I cannot do that. I cannot use a cell phone while I'm driving. I am one of those who will freely admit I am a disaster on the road if I attempt to use my cell phone while I'm driving. But much appreciated for the kitten love. As always, Twitch Kitten is one of the best communities I, I have been a member of here. Twitch Kittens and Extra Life, the two best communities on the internet, I would have to say. Uh, thank you, everyone. I'm going to try to be back later today on channel BJ Weiler. Um, I, at least I should be, because I'll have the entire house to myself. So I'll actually be able to do some streams. So I'll be back on uh, channel BJ Weiler a little bit later uh, today, probably early this afternoon, I think, uh, doing some MMOing. And then, of course, we'll be on um, probably late this afternoon, Eastern Time, on channel Real Millennium Group to do an Extra Life uh, fundraising stream. And then, uh, and then we'll go from there. Uh, I think I may want to be on tonight. I think I'm going to try to be on tonight to do Tropico, the original Tropico, because I wasn't able to do that yesterday. Uh, I, I want to get back into Tropico, so I may do that tonight Eastern Time as well. But thanks, everyone, for hanging out with me. It's much, much appreciated. Always great fun hosting you. I hope everybody had fun. hope everybody had fun. If you did, hey, follow. Hit that follow button. Uh, and, uh, and, uh, hopefully I'll see, I'll see all you kittens, uh, in short order on another raid here that I can actually be a part of myself. Thank you, everyone. I've got to go. My, my tummy is rumbling. I'm starting to eat away at the, at the gut here. The gut is starting to reduce because I'm starving here. And I guess I, I guess I should go check on the kids to see if they need something. I don't, I don't know. But thanks everyone. Thanks, Jadles. Thank you, everyone. Much, much, uh, much, uh, fun and pleasure hosting you today. We'll be back again tomorrow morning for Euro Truck Simulator 2. I'm going to get me a double logging trailer. Uh, I can't wait for that. I'm looking forward to that one. And then our usual EverQuesting Monday stream as well. 
In the meantime, thanks for watching everyone. Oh, you know what? I got to do this. Hold on. I, I got to do my outro here. Thanks for watching, everyone. I am BJ Weiler. Until next time, I will see you in game. And out on the roads. Have a good day, everyone. I must go eat. And then, uh, and then uh, we'll, we'll go see who we, we can raid up. Raid up uh, next as part of a Twitch Kittens raid. Thank you, everyone. I know. I'm starving. I'm hungry. <laughs> Thanks, everyone. Have a, have a good rest of your Sunday.